You will recall that just before the 2020 election, October 2020, the New York Post broke a story. It was about how Hunter Biden, who is a formerly drug-addicted derelict, now he may not be a drug addict, he's still a derelict. Hunter Biden, now an artist derelict, but at that time, a drug-addicted derelict, he left his laptop at a Delaware repair shop and just left it there because this is what drug-addicted derelicts do. And it turns out that that laptop was filled with all sorts of good stuff about Hunter Biden, including pictures of him with prostitutes and smoking crack. And there were text messages between him and his dad and him and his business partners about his dad and all this stuff. And the New York Post reported this. And you will also recall that social media immediately cracked down on it. Facebook said, sure, this has not been subjected to a fact check yet, but we're going to shadow ban it. We're going to reduce its distribution because it looks suspicious to us. Now, what looked suspicious about the story is that it was about Hunter Biden and it was bad. That's what looks suspicious because the notion that it was completely unthinkable that a doof like Hunter Biden would have just left a laptop at a Delaware repair shop, that's not particularly unthinkable. But the entire media instead swiveled into action to declare that this was in fact Russian disinformation because everything I don't like is Russian disinformation. Every single thing. When my scale tells me that I am four pounds more than I was just a couple of weeks ago. That is Russian disinformation. I don't know how they hacked my scale. I just know what I know. And that's precisely what happened with the Hunter Biden story. And so it was disappeared off Facebook. And if you posted it on Twitter, you were disappeared off Twitter. The New York Post account on Twitter was actually banned. It was closed down for like a month. It was suspended based on an overtly true story where there was no one even rebutting it. And the Biden administration, the Biden campaign, Hunter, none of them actually even denied that the story was true. They just kind of pretended that it was Russian disinformation. And the entire media swiveled into place because it was very, very important that Joe Biden win the election. And you wouldn't want one month out people to be talking about how Hunter Biden was stripping prostitutes and picking up giant bags of cash based on the fact that his last name was Biden. And you certainly wouldn't want anybody talking about the fact that Hunter Biden was chatting with his friends over in China about who the big guy was. And the big guy was gonna have reserved capital and reserved percentage points in businesses. You wouldn't want anybody talking about that, so you just made the story go away. And so you saw establishment media personalities, one after another, come out and say that the story was just fake. It was made up by the Russians. MSNBC executive producer Kyle Griffin, who's a wild leftist, he tweeted, the Trump campaign claims Facebook is censoring journalism because Facebook plans to limit the spread of the New York Post report. That is not censorship. Facebook is under no obligation to allow a disputed report that appears to contain disinformation to spread on their platform. Now, remember, this entire media apparatus has spent four years promoting the lie that Donald Trump was, in fact, a tool of the Russians and that the Steele dossier, which it turns out was just a bevy of garbage, was actually maybe true. We don't know. It's disputed. We don't know. But, but it's newsworthy. So we have to report it. You have the managing editor of truthorfiction.com, some of our trusted fact checkers, tweeting out, the great thing about this is that it's very easy to see who is committed to pushing known Kremlin disinformation. You have Ben Rhodes, former Obama official tweeting out the right to spread false Russian disinformation about American political leaders on social media platforms is not the hill I would choose to die on. You had Brian Stelter putting out entire stories about how this was all Russian disinformation targeting Biden. He had CNN's Wolf Blitzer tweeting out, we do know it's a very active Russian campaign. And that's according to the U.S. intelligence community. Ooh. Jim Shudo of CNN. He said, this is most likely Russian propaganda. You'll recall that there was an entire letter in Politico from 50 former intelligence officials, which, by the way, tells you why we don't trust our intelligence apparatus anymore, <laughs> because it turns out that all of the people in our intelligence apparatus, or at least a, a huge chunk of them, are just mental, mental idiots. I mean, they're, they're, it's, it's amazing. According to Politico, more than 50 former senior officials, intelligence officials, signed on to a letter outlining their belief that the recent disclosure of emails allegedly belonging to Joe Biden's sons has, quote, all the classic hallmarks of a Russian disinformation operation. The letter signed on Monday centers around a batch of documents released by the New York Post last week that purport to tie the Democratic nominee to his son Hunter's business dealings. The letter's signatories presented no new evidence, but they said their national security experience had made them, quote, deeply suspicious that the Russian government played a significant role in this case and cited several elements of the story that suggested the Kremlin's hand at work. And on the basis of these brilliant intelligence officials who had their thumb on the pulse of the intelligence flow. They knew this was Russian disinformation, despite the fact that they had no evidence it was Russian disinformation. And uh, no less than Joe Biden came out and said over and over and over that this was all nonsense. It just was not true. So, for example, 
Joe Biden said there was no controversy involving Hunter. Anyone who said there was controversy involving Hunter was just crazy. Here was Slow Joe. Questions of controversy continues today about Hunter Biden, your son's. Uh, there is no controversy about overseas my son. dealing. It's just all a lie. It's a flat lie because the president has nothing else to run on. Oh, so it was all lies. It was it was flat out lies, and and he didn't just say it once. He said it many many times. Here he was, just a little bit later, saying there was no evidence that anything was wrong that Hunter had done ever, like ever in the, in his in his entire head, nothing. Hunter Biden was clean as the driven snow that he was snorting. Here is here was. Joe Biden saying this on Axios. So you think that everything that happened was kosher? You know there's not one single bit of evidence, not one little tiny bit, to suggest anything done was wrong. You know that, but you keep asking me these questions. It's okay. He, you know, you're, you're, you know, you're doing what you have to do, but I'm not worried about it. Look, the American public knows me. Yes, we do. Yep. And suddenly you have lots and lots of houses all over the place after spending a lifetime in the Senate earning 200 grand a year. So, yeah, I mean, people have some questions. And then he said, well, you know, no one in this family will be taking overseas deals, said Joe Biden before the election. Hmm. Interesting. Weird. What guardrails would you have to be sure that your son, your brother, Jimmy, doesn't uh, do anything to trade on the family name? They will not be engaged in any foreign business because of what's happened in this administration. No one's going to be seeking patents for things from China. No one's going to be engaged in that kind of thing. So no foreign business for your Correct. relatives in office. And he's, he's not doing that because Hunter has some sort of corrupt history of, you know, going around and just picking up grift from a bunch of foreign countries like China and Ukraine. No, 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 no. He's doing it as a reaction to Trump's corruption. That's, that's, that's the key right here. Joe Biden said during the campaign, there was no conflict of interest with Hunter's Ukraine relations, none. Sure, Joe Biden was overseeing relations with Ukraine at the time when Hunter was pa picking up those giant bags of cash in Ukraine. But there was no conflict of interest, said Joe Biden. Again, all Russian disinformation, all of it. What was your role as vice president in, uh, in charge of policy in Ukraine and your son's job in Ukraine? How is that not a conflict of interest? It's not a conflict of interest. There's been no indication of any conflict of interest from but Ukraine even, or anywhere else, period. I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna respond to that. He's not even going to respond to that, not even going to respond. Well, as Charles Cook over at National Review points out, Joe Biden is Hunter Biden's father. He must've known full well the story wasn't a bunch of garbage. He must've known full well it wasn't a Russian plant. He must've known full well Rudy Giuliani wasn't the only one who believed it. Hell, he knew full well Hunter Biden himself hadn't denied the account and instead it said that the laptop absolutely could have been his. But Biden said otherwise, because he assumed that the press in Silicon Valley would back him up in the lie, which, of course, they did. And Joe Biden literally said this, quote, there are 50 former national intelligence folks who said that what he's accusing me of is a Russian plant. Five former heads of the CIA, both parties, say what he's saying is a bunch of garbage. No one believes it except his good friend Rudy Giuliani. That was Joe Biden lying because he knew all of it was true. Now, you recall that Jen Psaki who was working on the Biden campaign during this time. She came out at the time and called it Russian disinformation. She shared that political article on Twitter, the, the one that had all these former intelligence officials who are, who are so in the know, and so, we should definitely trust them, saying, quote, Hunter Biden's story is Russian disinfo, dozens of former intel officials say. That's what she, she tweeted out. So uh, Jen Psaki was asked about this yesterday, given the fact that, again, the New York Times did report it. It was, it was in paragraph 24. I'm not kidding. Paragraph 24 of this long, long story about Hunter Biden's problems with IRS scrutiny. Finally, it is admitted that this was not, in fact, Russian disinformation, that it was, in fact, real, that the laptop belonged to Hunter Biden, and that he did, in fact, leave it at this Delaware repair shop. Quote, people familiar with the investigation said prosecutors had examined emails between Biden, Mr. Archer, and others about Burisma and other foreign business activity. Those emails were obtained by the New York Times from a cache of files that appears to have come from a laptop abandoned by Mr. Biden in a Delaware repair shop. The email and others in the cache were authenticated by people familiar with them and with the investigation. Yeah, um, so there it is, just buried in paragraph 24. Now, normally what you would assume is that the top headline here would be, New York Times confirms laptop was not Russian disinformation. Instead, the headline from the New York Times was, Hunter Biden paid tax bill, but broad federal investigation continues. It's all unjustified. He's a good guy. He paid back the back taxes that he owed years later after selling his art for $500,000. Mm -hmm. New York Times covering its butt all the time. So Jen Psaki was asked about the fact 
that she had said it was Russian disinformation. And she started spinning so fast that she actually dug a hole directly through the center of the earth, discovering a renewable source of energy in the heat in the earth's core. You asked about Hunter Biden's laptop. You also, in October 2020, dismissed it as Russian disinformation. Do you stand by that assessment? Again, uh, I'd point you to the Department of Justice and Hunter Biden's representatives. Um, I'm a spokesperson for the United States. He doesn't work for the United States. Um, that was not the question. You may have noticed. And then, uh, I'm just going to go to this. <laughs> Uh, it's been fun. Isn't it fun that we are supposed to believe that all of the mechanisms of electoral integrity are on the up and up when it comes to the information that we are passed? It's always seemed to me that the argument that the 2020 election was rigged by voting fraud, for example, is overrated, that, that the evidence that this election was shifted by somebody stuffing the ballot box was not true. However, if you are going to say the election was rigged, it was rigged by a media that deliberately obfuscated and openly lied in order to suppress information about Hunter Biden and Joe Biden, for example, that deliberately refused to ask Joe Biden any tough questions and allowed him to hide in the basement for months at a time. And then are we really surprised that this administration is a bleep show? It was never held to account. And here's the thing. People in the media tend to think that when they go soft on their own candidates, this is good for their candidates. In reality, all that ends up happening is that reality clocks the administration directly in the face. So instead of asking Joe Biden any tough questions about his foreign policy or his ideas or his background or his relationships or anything, they hated Trump so much that they just decided to basically lie about everything and cover everything up. And in the case of social media, basically banned true stories in order to get Joe Biden elected. Then he got elected, and it turns out he's an unbelievably crappy president. Yeah. 